Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Many of you probably know that I've recently released a course on Lightroom Classic. It's called Ultimate Lightroom Classic Training. I put the word ultimate in the title for a very specific reason. All too often you'll purchase a course online, let's say it is a course on Lightroom Classic, and you'll get X number of videos, maybe some PDFs, and maybe you'll get the files as well. But that's it. In a year or two, the instructor will release a new updated course that you'll have to pay for. Well, I wanted my course, the Ultimate Lightroom Classic training course, to be different. Different in that I'm always going to be adding to it. If Adobe adds anything to or changes anything about Lightroom, I will do videos on that and add them to the course at no additional cost to you. Also, if I think of anything else the course could use, I'll do videos on that and add it to the course again at no additional cost to you. Now recently, someone who purchased the course emailed me suggesting that I create videos demonstrating how I would go about editing specific types of photos. How do I go about editing a landscape or a macro or a street photography shot or a wildlife shot? And I thought, well, that's a great idea. So in a month or two, I'm going to be doing videos like that and adding them to the course. Now I'll have more information about the course in the description below this video along with a discount code. Now, as far as today's YouTube video, I don't want those of you that haven't purchased out the course and have no intention of purchasing the course to feel that I'm turning my back on you. I have a really loyal following on YouTube that I really do value. I'm going to keep doing videos on Lightroom that I'm going to be posting to YouTube just like I always have. And in today's video, I'm going to do kind of like a video that I plan to do for the course in that I'm going to show you how I go about editing a wildlife image. Now, this probably isn't going to be the image I'll use in the course. As a matter of fact, the course will probably have multiple images that you'll be able to download and work at home with, and you'll get PDF outlines, everything the course offers you'll get. But here, I just want to show you how I go about editing a wildlife image in Lightroom Classic. Now, this is an unedited RAW file. The first thing that I do is I make sure the white balance is right, that the profile is right. I just make sure that it's exposed correctly. Everything looks good to me. Then what I'll do is I'll zoom in and look at the noise situation. Now this was shot with an Nikon D500 with ISO 1600. There is some noise. I wouldn't call it a considerable amount of noise, but there is noise. I suggest you remove noise early in your workflow with pretty much any type of image, wildlife, landscape, anything. Remove noise early in your workflow. It just works better and you'll be able to do a better edit because of it. So what I'll do is before I do anything else, I'll then drop down to the detail panel and I'll look to see that noise reduction, this denoise noise reduction is available. It will only be available on raw files, right now at least, and it will only be available for specific types of RAW files, RAW files that were created with cameras that use either an X-Trans or a Bayer sensor. Now, Adobe has said that they plan to expand this in the future, so hopefully when you're watching this video, it works on JPEGs and TIFFs and on uh, RAW files that were created with sensors other than Bayer or X-Trans, but right now, it only works on Bayer and X-Trans ran RAW files. This camera uses a Bayer sensor, so I'm in luck. Denoise is available. It is superior to the manual noise reduction, so you just hope you could use this because it will work better. And all you need to do is press this button and you'll get this enhanced preview dialog box. Now, typically what I like to do here is I like to zoom out. Then you'll have a little plus sign. And this allows you to click and zoom into a specific part of the image. I like to zoom into what I call a mission critical part, like a part that's important. In this case, it would be the bird's eye, and then I get a piece of the background as well. So I could just see, you know, the noise on the background because that's where it's most noticeable. Also, if you click, you'll see you'll get a before and then let go of the left mouse button, you'll get an after, and you could click and drag the image around. So I like it right there. Now, you'll notice the slider is set to 75. This isn't an AI slider, meaning it doesn't examine the image and then put the amount slider where it thinks it should be. That is the last setting I used. So the last time I edited an image using Denoise, I had it set at 75. So you really should go and for each image, set the slider very specific to your image because 
if you have amount too high, you'll start to soften the details. And you don't want to soften the image, especially a wildlife shot. You don't want to soften the bird. You want to make sure the bird is as, as sharp as possible. So you want to move the amount slider just enough to get rid of the noise, but not any more than that. Now, what I typically do is I put it right in the middle. So I'll start at 50 and then I'll look at the image and you can see there's still a little bit of noise in there right in here. You could drag it around to see it removed the noise mostly around the homogenous areas of the background, but this area here, a little bit of noise, maybe a tiny bit of noise in the bird eye a little bit. So I need to go higher. Now I had it at 75. It's at 50 now. At 75, the noise was completely gone. So what I'll do is I'll kind of split the difference. So I'll go to like 62, 63, something like that. And then I'll look and see how it looks. And here, it definitely removed the noise now in here. I'm sure you can't see this in the video. The video is probably not resolute enough, not even at 4K, for you to really see what I could see when my nose is 18 inches away from my 27-inch monitor. So it's gone there. Now I'll split the difference again. I was at 50. I'm now at 62. So I'll try to go in the middle of that somewhere, you know, so somewhere in there, get an idea. And right around 56 looks good. It's gone. So that's good. I think that I just moved the amount slider enough where I'm getting rid of the noise, but it's not so far that I'm starting to soften the, the uh, fine feather detail of the bird. So I'm just going to click enhance. Now, when I do that, um, Lightroom is non-destructive RAW editor, so it's not going to touch the original Nikon RAW file. It's going to create a new RAW file, a DNG file. So we'll do all our work on that. So you don't lose the RAW format when you use Denoise. You'll keep the RAW format, but you'll get another uh, file. So if you have, uh, you don't have a lot of disk space, be aware that you're creating a new file. It's going to take up some disk space. All right. So here's our noise reduced image. There's the original raw file. I could zoom in and give you a kind of a before after. I'll zoom in like this. I hold the command key in on my Mac, by the way, and drew that rectangle. You hold the control key on a PC. You could zoom in like that. And if I go up to view and I lock the zoom position, which is right there. Now, when I click to the Nikon raw file, you'll see the noise and it doesn't move because I locked the zoom position. And when I go over to our new raw file, you can see I removed the noise and I didn't overly uh, soften the feather detail of our house finch. All right, so I'm done with the noise. Next, I'll do some global adjustments. That means I'll be affecting every single pixel in the image. I'll go to the basic tab. Exposure is fine. I don't think I need to worry about that. I might maybe, maybe just tweak that up just a little. Maybe just make it up a touch brighter. That's what I'll do first. I rarely move the contrast slider ever. I usually could get con enough contrast just moving the blacks and whites slider, and you'll see that in a moment. So I rarely move that contrast slider. I'll go to white or highlights, and what I like to do is zoom in on a bright part of the image, like maybe the edge of this, and I'll just pull highlights down until I start to see some detail come in there. Now it's difficult because it's, it's blurry there, so I'll try to just look. And I just want to pull highlights down enough where I start to get some detail in the brightest parts of the image. So yeah, let me reset it and then pull it down like that. That's all. Then shadows in this case, I'll just open those up. Similarly, I could go to a dark part of the image and see if I see some detail like that. Now I'll get a white and black point. And the way I like to do it is I hold in my option key on my Mac, it's alt key on a PC. I'll click on whites. When I do that, the entire screen turns black. I'll move this to the right till I see some color come through and look oh, right, almost right away. I got some white and blue coming through. And I'll just back this off now until that color just dissipates. And that's a perfect white point. Now, the reason why you want to do that is if you go too far and allow that color to come through, that means you're going to be blowing out the highlights. When you print it, no ink will put down. There's no detail there to print. So no ink will be put down. Now, typically, you probably want to avoid blowing out the highlights. So that's why you get the white point that way. Just hold in the option or alt key, click on the white slider, and then back it off till you just have a totally black screen. Now, similarly for blacks, hold in that same alt option key, click on blacks. This time the screen turns white. Now pull this to the left and eventually you'll see some color come through, mostly black. There's a little green. And now you're starting to crush the shadows. Now, if you crush the shadows and you go to print it, the uh, printer, because there's no detail there, just put black ink down. 
Now, personally, I don't mind crushing the shadows a little bit, or at least clipping the shadows a bit. So I, I won't mind a little color coming through like that. So I've adjusted five sliders. The exposure slider, highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks. And there's our image so far. There's a before and there's after. There's before, there's after. So, so far, so good. Now I want to do some uh, adjustments that are specific to the house finch. So I'm going to use masking for that. I'm going to open up the masking tool and I'm going to select the subject. It selected the subject, but it also selected some of the branches. So I need to subtract from this mass. So I'll click the subtract button and then click on brush. So I'm going to subtract with a brush. And I think feather around 34 is good. Flow and density, I wanted 100. And I could affect the size of the brush with my mouse by just dragging my finger on my Apple Magic Mouse. If you have a PC, you have that little center click wheel, you could use that. You could use the slider. You could use the bracket keys, right bracket key makes a larger, left bracket key smaller. We'll come in here and paint away the mask from where I don't want it. Now in here, I think over in here, not really. All right, now this is going to be difficult because it's uh, on these branches that are directly behind the bird's head and this branch here, which kind of goes behind the bird's back. I'm not so worried about the bottom here. So what I'll do is I'll turn on auto mask. Auto mask will allow me to click in a specific area and hopefully make a little smaller brush, hopefully not affect the bird's heads. As long as I stay on that area I'm clicking on, you can see how I could come in here and not get it on the bird or not remove it from the bird, I should say. So that looks pretty good. I think right there. All right, so I have pretty much the bird masked. I think good enough. What I want to do here is I just want to tweak exposure up just a little bit because what I'm going to do next will make it look a little darker. I'm going to go to effects and I'm going to go to clarity. And when I turn see how clarity makes it look a little darker, add some texture. And then we're going to go to detail and we'll add some sharpening. That looks pretty decent, I think right there. All right, now I got the bird looking decent, nice and sharp. But the background is still a little too bright. I want to diminish the background. So I could go and get another mask for the background. But an easier way, because I have this bird mask perfectly, is I just create a new mask, a copy of this mask, but I invert it. And I could do that in all, one false swoop by going where it says mask one, clicking there, and go down to duplicate and invert mask. Now you'll see just the background is selected. Now with this new mask, I'll go to tone and I'll pull exposure down like that. And then I'm going to go to color and I'm actually going to take a little saturation away. And then I'm going to go now looking at the subject mask, it looks a little bit too bright the one I want. And then I'll go to exposure and I'll bring that back down to a more like realistic looking level. And then I am going to go to color on the subject now and I'm going to bring saturation up. So I'm really done masking, I think, the image, and I'm really pretty much done with the image. You notice I didn't add any global texture, clarity, dehaze, vibrance, or saturation. I did that all locally with the masking. I am going to go down to lens corrections. No, I'm sorry. I am going to go down to effects. And I'm just going to put a little darker of a vignette on it. Having a darker edges will help push everyone's attention more towards the middle. Now, I may have confused you a bit with the masking. I have two different masks here. I have the original mask and I have the inverted mask. The original mask is just on the bird. Remember, I got that mask, but then I subtracted from it with a brush. And I could have just created a new mask and click, did background, but that would have um, excluded like the little tiny branches behind the bird that were you know added before, and I would have had to add to that mask. An easier way was to click on the three little dots next to mask one, and go down to duplicate and invert mask. When I did that, it took everything I, I did. I created a subject mask and subtracted from it, and then it just inverted that. And then I was able to then go to that inverted mask, and in this case, I went to tone, and I made the background a little darker. And I went to color, and I took a little color out of the background. So the bird is just a little more prominent, kind of subtly, and then, to finish it off, I added that vignette. And, and that's pretty much everything I would do 
on a wildlife image, at least this wildlife image. And again, in the course, I'll have multiple examples that will cover hopefully some other scenarios you may encounter. But here is a before after. There's before and there's after. I still think the bird is probably a little too bright, don't you? So I'll go to mask here and let's go back to tone and see I have it at 0.23. Maybe I'll just double click on it to reset it. Maybe something even down like that. I think that maybe looks more natural in its environment, in its habitat. So there is before and there's after. So that's it. That's how, you know, I go about editing a wildlife image, even a simple image of a house finch that was in a bush outside the kitchen window. Uh, again, in the description below this video, I'll have a link uh, to my website. You can check out my Ultimate Lightroom Classic training course, um, and there'll be a discount code there as well. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.